Well, the title of my message is, Don't Lose Sight of the Value of a Soul. When we are born into this world, we immediately have a soul. And God looks upon us not as human vessels, but as souls that will exist forever. But unfortunately, most human beings do not think about their souls. They only think about their human bodies. Parents, when you have a child, you are concerned primarily about their well-being because without your help, they would die. You provide that infant with warmth and nourishment because it cannot provide these things for itself. At this stage of life, you have to do everything, you, everything for that child. You have to feed them. You have to bathe them. You have to change their diaper. You have to take care of them all the time because they're an infant. Adam and Eve didn't start life as an infant. God created them as adults in his image. They had fully formed minds and bodies. And yes, they each had a soul. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, And the Lord, God, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But how much value did they place on their soul. From the beginning of creation, every soul was meant to serve God. But God gave man free choice, the ability to decide whether they were going to serve God or whether they were going to serve the devil. In Ezekiel chapter 4, excuse me, chapter 18, verse 4, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Our souls are going to exist forever after our human body dies. The question is, where will your soul exist? In heaven or in hell? It all depends how much you value, value your soul and how much value you put on that soul. Anyone that chooses to listen and obey the devil doesn't really put much value on their soul. So what value did Eve put on her soul? And was it worth the exchange? Well, we all know Eve allowed the serpent to persuade her to eat of the forbidden tree, and she lost her soul over it. Basically, she was conned by the serpent. Think about it. Eve sold her soul to the devil with the promise that she could be wise like God's. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The devil, from the very beginning, has been in the business of trade. And he conned Eve out of her soul. And he's been scamming people for many years, trading souls. He wants every human being to trade their soul, which is their most valuable possession for eternal death. And in Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What will you give in exchange for your soul? 
Are you being conned by the devil? A master con artist has the skill to persuade someone to do what they want, want to do what he wants them to do without them really even knowing it. They know the art, excuse me, they know the art of manipulation and deception is from the devil, but they don't realize it, that the devil is conning them. Look at Jacob's life in the Bible. Jacob conned his brother Esau out of his birthright for a measly bowl of pottage. Even though Jacob and Esau were twins, they were very different from each other. Esau was considered a cunning hunter. He was considered an outdoorsman. On the other hand, Jacob preferred to stay home. Actually, he seemed to be like a mama's boy. So Isaac preferred and favored Esau. And Rebekah preferred and favored Jacob. When Esau came from the field one day, he was hungry and he felt faint. And he wanted some of Jacob's pottage. Now the kind thing to do would be to give your brother some food to help him out in his time of need because he feels faint. But that was not in Jacob's heart. Jacob wanted to take advantage of his brother in his time of need. When you con someone, you are not thinking what they are going to lose. All you're thinking about is what you are going to gain. When self is on the throne, you will not be willing to help others in their time of need. God wants us to help others so that we can lead them to Christ, not away from Christ. There are plenty of people in this world that are only focused on helping themselves. And that is not what the Lord wants. Jesus preached the following passage in his Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 41 through 44, I read, And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. When you hurt others and take advantage of the situation, they can become bitter towards you and the God that you serve. Jacob saw an opportunity to take advantage of his brother by getting him to give up his birthright for a bowl of of pottage. Are you willing to go out of your way to help someone in need? Or do you weigh it out and ask yourself, what's in it for me? When you go out of your way and help someone, it can leave a great impression on that person that can lead to an opportunity to witness them, to tell them about Jesus. But on the other side of the coin, if you don't go out of your way to help someone, it can leave a negative impression on that person, and then the Holy Spirit doesn't really have anything to work with. As Christians, we should always consider the value of a soul and be willing to go that extra mile expecting nothing in return. Jesus never let his personal or physical needs replace his need to please the Father. 
if we can feed someone the word of God, in other words, give them the truth about salvation, don't you think that we should put for the effort to do that? Jesus already paid the price for his life, with his life. When you withhold the truth from a hungry soul because it's inconvenient or you're just too busy at the time, then it's time to reevaluate your priorities. Jacob's priorities was to obtain Jesus, I mean, Esau's birthright. Later when Isaac, their father, was near death, he requested that his son Esau kill a deer and prepare a meal for him before dividing up the inheritance. Rebekah, their mother, favored Jacob, like I said earlier, and she wanted him to get the blessing. So she comes up with a plan to deceive Isaac, her husband, into giving Jacob the larger portion of the inheritance. Jacob pretends to be his brother, so he would get the blessing. This time Esau was so angry at his brother that he threatened to kill him. So Jacob feared his brother and feared his life for his life, and he ran to another country to find his mother's relatives to stay with. When you mishandle yourself with family, it can cause division of resentment and bitterness, and it may take many years for them to forgive you of what they did. Later in life, Jacob wanted to make things right with his brother, but he didn't know if Esau would be willing to receive him. He didn't know if Esau resented him still. So the night before Jacob meets Esau, he wrestles with an angel until the angel blesses him. So much so that the angel ends up blessing him and tells him that his name is changed from Jacob to Israel. The angel tells Jacob, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Jacob was now on the right track and he was being blessed by God. But he still had to make things right with his brother. When Jacob saw his brother come in his way, he humbly bowed down seven times before him. This softened Esau's heart. And Esau ran to Jacob, and he embraced him, and he fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept together. Reconciliation finally came because Jacob had made a covenant with God. When you give your heart to the Lord, you need to look at people through the Lord's eyes and remember that there is value in every soul. Jesus never lost sight of the value of a soul, so much so that he was willing to be falsely accused, beaten, tortured, and hung on a cross. One of the last things Jesus said when he was hanging on that cross was, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus knew the value of each and every soul that he was willing to forgive those that were putting him to death. Jesus was willing to pay the price with his life for your soul and for mine. Jesus tells a parable in Luke chapter 15, verses 4. Through seven. I'd like to read it. It starts off with, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them and doth not leave the ninety-nine and, excuse me, and doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he findeth it. And when he hath found it, 
he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. The sheep in this parable represent people. In the first part of this parable, Jesus is asking the question, are you willing to rescue one soul that is lost and leave the 99 that are safe behind? In other words, words, are you willing to risk all that you have to rescue one soul? When Jesus came down to earth, from heaven, he gave up everything in heaven, not knowing that if he was going to even win one soul, but he was willing to do that for your soul and mine. Jesus is our shepherd, and he wants to help us in our time of need. And he also wants us to help him find as many lost souls as possible and win them for him. I don't know about you, but there is no greater feeling than leading someone to Jesus Christ. To know that you have rescued a soul just gives you such a great gratification, and you're so thankful that that soul has come in to the fold. Well, like the scripture said earlier, even the angels in heaven rejoice when so one soul accepts Jesus Christ. Now remember, the devil is a master con artist, and he's going to do everything in his power to make us lose sight of the value of a soul. There are so many examples in the Bible of souls that Jesus rescued. But I want to go to the story where there's this woman that meets Jesus at the well. It's a beautiful story of redemption. It also is a great example of how we as Christians need to focus on the spiritual and not the physical when it comes to lost souls. The story can be found in John's Gospel, the fourth chapter. Jesus and disciples were in Judea and they were traveling to Galilee, but they were going to go through Samaria. And after a long day of traveling, Jesus rested at Jacob's well while the disciples went on to buy some food. While Jesus is waiting for the disciples to return, a woman comes to that well, a Samaritan woman. And Jesus asks her for a drink of water. This shocked the woman because the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. But Jesus wasn't looking at the woman as a Samaritan. He was looking at a woman as a soul with value that needed rescued. So Jesus offered this woman living water. Water so that her soul would never thirst again. Jesus knew that this woman was a sinner. And he let her know that she could be forgiven. The woman was so excited that she left her water pot, went into the city to witness to the people, encourage them to come and see Jesus. Isn't that what God wants all of us to do? Tell others about Jesus so that they can leave their earthly water pots behind and receive spiritual, living water. During this time, the disciples came back and they brought food with them and they wanted Jesus to eat. But Jesus knew it was not time to satisfy the flesh. It was time to satisfy the spirit. Jesus tells the disciples that he had meat to eat that they were not aware of. Jesus was receiving spiritual strength from heaven to rescue lost souls. When you put self under subjection, 
of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, then you will receive supernatural strength from God. Unfortunately, the disciples still were missing it. They were thinking someone must have gave Jesus some food and he ate it. Jesus explains to them that my meat is to do the will of the Father that sent me and to finish his work. Our focus needs to be on the spiritual meat. It's God's will for us to rescue lost souls. In John chapter 4, verse 35, Say not ye, there are, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. The Lord wants us to know that the harvest fields are ripe and ready to be harvested. But if we don't put a value on the soul, put value on souls to put them first, then we're going to miss it. We're going to miss out on souls. We need to reap this harvest to rescue as many souls as possible. The bride of Christ must look at every person in the spiritual sense as a soul that needs living water that they, so that they will never thirst again. So child of God, examine your life. Do you value all souls? Are you willing to rescue souls and make that sacrifice in your life? Are you about your father's business? Ready to be a blessing to others? Jesus paid the, pro paid the price so that we could have eternal life. Now it's up to us to pick up the cross and follow Jesus and tell others about Jesus. Sinner backslider, don't you know how valuable your soul is? The devil has conned you into thinking that you are missing out on worldly pleasures and you're doing them. Don't let the devil deceive you because you can have Jesus Christ in your heart. Remember, the devil's only here for a season. And then he's going to go away, but he will come back to try to tempt you again and again. You need Jesus Christ in your heart. Jesus loves you, and he knows that your soul is more valuable than all the wealth in the world. He already proved his love by dying on the cross. Now it's time to prove your love to him by accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. Pray with me now to ask Jesus into your heart. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins come into my heart Jesus come on in Jesus friend if you meant that prayer you have Jesus Christ in your heart now let's get your miracle for you it doesn't matter what sickness or disease is in your body maybe you put your request in tonight maybe you're someone here in the audience that sent up a prayer and asked God to move for you or Jesus to move for you well, at this time, we're going to pull down heaven together, expecting God to move in a great, mighty way. And the Bible lets us know that believers will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Well, I'm a believer, so just go ahead and put your hand on your listening device, or maybe you're watching. Go ahead and put it on the screen against my hand. This is a point of contact, and we're going to pull down heaven together, expecting God to move for you in a great way. Lord, Heavenly Father, just move in a great and mighty way. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus. You know each and every request that has come in through this church 
and throughout the world. Lord, just move and break their bondages and set them free. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And let everything come to normal in their body. And Lord, just give them the strength and let them have a wonderful testimony for you. Amen. Friend, just look for every sign of improvement and give God all the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'd love to hear your testimony, what God is doing for you. Well, you can contact us through social media and let us know. And maybe we can go ahead and read that and tell others how God has blessed you and healed you and set you free. Well, now at this time, now that you have been blood washed, now it's time to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need to be spirit-filled. And when you're spirit-filled, you'll have that go ye to tell others about Jesus, and you'll be a mighty witness. Jesus wanted the disciples to tarry until the upper room to receive that more power on high. But he also wanted to re receive that power so that they could be witnesses. He didn't even have them go out and be witnesses until they received that power from on high. It's very important to receive that power, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's because the Holy Ghost is going to be your comforter, your guide, and he's also give, going to give you what to say to win souls because every soul has value. Now, at this time, I'd like everybody to stand here. And those of you that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can go to my left, your right, and we're going to have helpers over there to help you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, maybe you're at home right now, and you're watching, and you're like, well, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, you can. I'm going to call down a great anointing upon you, and you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All you have to do is say glory, and as you're saying glory, one glory right after another, the Holy Ghost can come on in, take over your tongue, speak in a heavenly language. It won't be you speaking. It will be him, but you have to trust him. And one of the hardest things for people to do is let go of their tongue. So that's the last thing before the Holy Ghost will come in. And he will take over that tongue and he may start speaking in a heavenly language and you're going to be blessed. So let the Holy Spirit bless you tonight by receiving him. So now I'm going to call down this anointing upon you. And like I said, all you, do, all you need to do is just say glory and let him change those glories into a heavenly language. Lord, Heavenly Father, as I call down this great anointing upon the people, as they're focused on you, glorifying Jesus, I call down this great anointing. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And keep on praising him, glorifying Jesus, glorifying the King. Yes, just keep Keep on praising him, yielding over to his love, yielding on over to his grace, praising Jesus, just you and Jesus, just you and Jesus, just fall in love with those praises, friend. This is what he wants, a yielded vessel, you and Jesus, just yielding on over. Let him take over your tongue. Let him change those glories into a heavenly language, yes. Let him bless you, just yielding on over. Let that power get greater in your body, glorifying Jesus, glorifying the King. Yes, just keep on praising him. Lifting up those praises, glorifying Jesus. Yes, let him bless you. Just yield on over, praising the King, glorifying Jesus. Just you and Jesus, glorifying the King. Lifting those praises up. Let that power go all through your body. Fall in love with those praises. Yielding to that love, yielding to that grace, glorifying Jesus. Fall in love with those praises. Let him bless you. Let him bless you in a mighty way. Yes, this is what you need. More power from on high. From more power on high. Yes, friend, this is what he wants. A yielded vessel. Yes, let him take over your tongue. Just yield on over. Just yield on over. Let him take over your tongue all the way. Let him form the words. Let him change those glories. Let him change those glories. Yes. Let him change you. Just yield to that. Just yield to that all the way. Let him change those glories. Let him bless you. Lifting up that praise. Yes, glorifying Jesus. Let, let go of those glories. Just let go of those glories. Let him speak in another language. You and Jesus. Praise in the King. Praise in Jesus. Yes, this is what he wants. 
This is what you need, friend. More power from on high. Glorifying Jesus. This is exciting. Praise Him with your whole heart. Lifting up those praises. You and Jesus glorifying the King. Yes. Yes, He is worthy. He is worthy. Yes, praise Him. Praise Him. Lifting up those praises. You and Jesus. You and Jesus glorifying the King. Just let go of those Jesus glories. Let him change more. those glories into a heavenly sky. language. What a day blessing that Jesus. Must blessing the King. Yes. From your heart to heaven. From your heart to heaven. Praise him, Jesus. Yes. Just let go. He wants to baptize you. He wants to baptize you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The nails struck down in his hands and feet. Sinless blood fell to the ground. With the final blow into his side, he forever showed us how. He showed us how to give our lives for more than just ourselves. He showed us how to sacrifice for souls that must be held. He showed Son of God has shown us how, and Jesus is His name. Oh, the suffering we all have known will never truly compare to the sacrifice He made for us and what He gave. Showed us how to love the world. 